Humane Society, PETA, and organizations that train dogs for the disabled. Mahdi enjoys exercising and boxing to stay focused, relaxed, and in shape. Mahdi is grateful to her mother and father who have been with her throughout her career and personal triumphs. She dedicates her accomplishments to them. Ladies and gentlemen, our next honoree, Lisette Mahdi. Miriam Marquez has worked at the Miami Herald since October 2005. As an assistant city editor, she has coordinated coverage of South Florida's Latin American and Caribbean communities. She was tapped deputy metro editor in December 2007, served as metro columnist in 2008, and was selected to oversee the opinion pages in print and online in 2009. I got to Miami-Dade and I went to the Kendall campus and I always felt that, you know, it was the little school that could. Marquez has overseen award-winning projects. Miriam's mother taught her strength and perseverance and how to be a good mother to her two sons. Miriam relishes her relationship with her parents as well as her husband. Our next honoree, ladies and gentlemen, Miriam Marquez. Joe Servin joined Holland and Knight in 1993. He has served as the Miami office's executive partner, national practice group leader for the firm's financial services practice, and has been on the firm's director's committee for over a decade. Joe's passion is to serve clients. As a transactional lawyer, he represents domestic and international banks and other financial services on a myriad of issues. Joe has an active corporate, mergers, and acquisitions practice in which he represents businesses from numerous countries and industries. I started at Miami-Dade with my first accounting course. I got to Miami-Dade and it's as if a light turned on, literally. Servin has many professional accolades, including being named a finalist for the Daily Business Review's Most Effective Lawyer Award in the international category in 2006. Joe is a father of three beautiful children. He is a mentor to young professionals and college students Gentlemen, Mr. Jose Servin. As Associate Director of Hospitalists and Internal Medicine at Jackson Memorial Hospital, Cuban-born Orlando Rodriguez leads acute emergencies in internal medicine, manages an outpatient practice of international patients, and serves as a mentor to Caribbean students. Dr. Rodriguez is honored to have participated in humanitarian missions to countries such as Haiti, Guatemala, Honduras, and Puerto Rico. He aids the poor who lack access to vaccinations and modern medicine and aims to reverse the effects of illnesses that are a result of insufficient medical attention. Miami Day opened the doors to me for lots of opportunities. It was a world of opportunities. It was a place where I started my career. During his free time, Dr. Rodriguez enjoys fishing and shopping with his family. He also plays his guitar. Rodriguez's grandmother provided a great influence in his life, and now his wife and two children encourage him to become a better man and doctor. Our next honoree, Dr. Orlando Rodriguez. Cuban-American soprano Elizabeth Caballero began her singing career at the encouragement of Luciano Pavarotti just two years into her training at Miami-Dade College. Since then, Caballero has appeared in numerous national productions of favorite operas such as Carmen, La Boheme, I Pagliacci, and La Traviata. 
Elizabeth has won many awards throughout her career, including the coveted Diva Award from the New York City Opera. When I started at MDC, I really didn't have a major. I went to college because um, I was lucky enough to get a scholarship. Caballero is passionate about supporting classical music in South Florida. She works closely with organizations such as the Florida Grand Opera and Orquesta Miami to advance this cause in our community. During her downtime, Caballero enjoys exercising, bicycling, yoga, and spending time with her pets. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Elizabeth Caballero. A well-seasoned leader with more than 30 years of experience, Diana Campoamor advocates on behalf of people and institutions that make a difference in their community. As president of Hispanics in Philanthropy, Diana aims to remedy the structural underfunding for Hispanic groups. Through a funders collaborative, HIP supports emerging young Latino leaders and organizations through a collaboration of local, national, and international funders. She is a former director of Independent Sector and Council of Foundations. Diana lives in the San Francisco Bay Area, loves art, movies, bicycling, and meditation. She is a doting grandmother as well as mother. Miami Day was a terrific place to be. I remember the first time that I heard about, um, you know, the great philosophers was at Miami Day. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Diana Campoamor. As Fire Chief of the City of Coral Gables Fire Department, Walter Reed serves the city's 43,000 residents and has taught over 1,000 students firefighting science at Miami-Dade College. Chief Reed proudly serves on organizations such as the Fire Marshals Inspectors Association and the Executive Board of the Fire Officers Association for Miami. He also works with children and the elderly in the community. His department sponsors programs in schools to teach CPR and first aid and to encourage fire safety. Um, I went to the North Campus and I decided I wanted to enroll in fire science because I wanted to make a difference and serve the public. My family's always been in public service. He is most passionate about finding a cure for Alzheimer's. As a father of five daughters and grandfather of two, Chief Reed continuously learns from his family patience and understanding. He is thankful for his parents and his wife's love and support. Ladies and gentlemen, Walter Reed. As a 34-year veteran, Rafael P. Hernandez Jr. is the Chief of Police for the City of North Miami. Some of his professional accomplishments include making history as the first Hispanic chief in Massachusetts. I went to the Miami Day uh, Junior uh, North Campus. The professors were great. They really went out of, you, out of their way to assist you and help you out. Responsible for 3,000 employees in eight state agencies and leading the efforts to ensure citizen safety at the Port of Boston and Logan Airport after 9-11. His proudest professional achievement is to be a mentor to his troops under his leadership, police officers rise through the ranks and set an example of courage and perseverance for a new generation. Chief Hernandez enjoys reading, movies, running, and exercising. He is inspired by his parents, his wife, and his children, who are his pride, his joy, and his strength. Up next, Rafael Hernandez.
Alberto Dosal is founder, president, and CEO of CompuQuip Technologies, one of South Florida's largest fully integrated IT services providers. Mr. Dosal is a Chairman Circle member of the Greater Miami Chamber of Commerce and group chair of its domestic business development group. Mr. Dosal serves on the board of directors for CompuQuip Technologies, Blue Wave Communications, and Capital America. The step be between high school and college, at least for me, in my mind, was a big step. And Miami-Dade was an extremely, extremely positive experience because it made the transition very, very, very easy. DeSalle is a sport enthusiast who enjoys boating, fishing, and football. Today, both his sons, Eric and Brian, are involved in the business. DeSalle is very proud of his children and loving wife. Our next honoree, Mr. Alberto Dosal. As the District 6 Secretary, Gus Pego is responsible for the overall planning, construction, operations, and maintenance of the state's highway system in Miami-Dade and Monroe counties. Pego is involved on projects such as the State Road's 826-836 interchange, the airport's rental car facility, the Miami Intermodal Center, and the Port of Miami Tunnel. I already have my vision on Miami Day. I, I started in pre-engineering. Great professors that kind of open young folks' eyes and minds to make us want to grab for more. Born in New Jersey of Cuban parents, Gus moved to Miami in 1958 and continues to live in the neighborhood where he grew up. This proud father of two is inspired by his sons, his wife, and his beloved parents. Our next honoree, Mr. Gus Pago. Luis Garcia is president and founder of Adenel Concrete, the largest privately owned concrete company in South Florida. An active business leader, Garcia serves on the board of directors for the Builders Association of South Florida. Luis's and his company's honors include Ernst & Young's Entrepreneur of the Year in the Southeast Region, Businessman of the Year by the Nicaraguan American Chamber of Commerce, and the Greater Miami Chamber of Commerce's Top 100 Hispanic Businesses in Florida. What I remember the most about the college is I went for a, a student loan and they welcomed me with open arms. Garcia places much emphasis on community involvement and participates in projects with the March of Dimes and Habitat for Humanity. The company has donated concrete and other resources to a number of local schools and churches. Garcia is a loving father of three teenage daughters who idolize their dad. Luis Garcia, come on down. While attending Miami Dade College's New World School of the Arts, Michael Vasquez realized he could be a professional artist. He currently exhibits his work at galleries and museums throughout the United States and is represented by Frederick Snitzer's gallery. Vasquez's artworks explore issues of family, relationships, identity, and the allure and effect of neighborhood gangs on the youth. Vasquez is proud of his community work with underprivileged youth and relishes discussing his art and real life issues that are prevalent in his work with them. My experience going to Miami Dade was pretty unique. Um, being submerged in all the culture, it's very enriching. Vasquez's main source of inspiration is his beloved mother, who supported and encouraged him to be a better person and an artist. Michael dedicates his accomplishments to her. And last but not least, Mr. Michael Vasquez. Ladies and gentlemen, I am extremely proud to present to you the 2011 Alumni Hall of Fame inductees. Let's give him a big round of applause. Are you MTC? 
Miami-Dade College is the most diverse college in the nation. With an enrollment of more than 170,000 students, MDC is the largest institution of higher education in the country and is a national model for many of its programs. The college's eight campuses and outreach centers offer more than 300 distinct degree programs, including baccalaureate, associate in arts and science degrees, and numerous career training certificates leading to in-demand jobs. MDC has served nearly 2 million students since it opened its doors in 1960. On May 10, 2011, Miami-Dade College inducted 22 luminaries into its ninth Alumni Hall of Fame. These outstanding alumni represent numerous industries, including medicine, business, law, opera, and public safety, and have made a significant impact in the community and our nation. This year's inductees were honored at a gala that raised funds for student scholarships. Good evening again, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Juan Mendia, the Director of Communications at Miami-Dade College and a very proud alumnus. It is my privilege to be your Master of Ceremonies tonight for this exciting and momentous event. How about a big warm round of applause for our musicians, the Miami Big Sound Orchestra. And on behalf of our president, Eduardo Padron, who will speak shortly, and our 174,000 students, welcome. I'd like to thank you for joining us tonight again for the 2011 Miami-Dade College Hall of Fame Awards Gala. Tonight we honor 22 very special individuals. We're here to recognize them for their exemplary contributions to their professions, and more importantly, to honor them for their commitment to our great community and to our nation. I'd like to take a special moment to recognize some very special people who make everything happen at Miami-Dade College. I'd like to recognize our District Board of Trustees and the Miami-Dade College Foundation Board at this time, beginning with the Chair of the Miami-Dade College Board, Helen Aguirre Ferre. Of course, our able Vice Chair, Mr. Peter Rulock. And last but not least this evening, Armando Bucero, Jr., trustee of the Miami-Dade College Board. <laughs> Playing a very special role this evening is the Miami-Dade College Foundation Board. They do so much for putting events together like this. And I'd like to recognize the chairman of the Foundation Board, Mr. Mike Farra. Mike, one of our past honorees. We also have a wonderful vice chair of the foundation board and Julie Grimes. Julie. Also this evening, one of our honorees and the secretary of the foundation board, Beatrice Lusant. Beatrice, all right. Also on the foundation board is Ms. Maria Alonso. Maria. A wonderful benefactor of the college and a member of the foundation board, Mr. Alfredo Al Salas. Mr. Salas. And of course, one of our movers and shakers in town, one of our young movers and shakers, I saw him a little while ago, Mr. Jorge Placencia. We'd also like to recognize the hundreds of employees and volunteers who make this event so special and the friends who have dedicated their time, talents, and energies to make this evening a wonderful success. While tonight's event celebrates our alumni, it is very much about our current students as well. The 2011 graduating class at Miami-Dade College saw 14,000 students receive degrees just a few days ago as President Barack Obama addressed them at commencement. We're here. Yes. Yeah. 
We're here to recognize the vital role that MDC plays in our community and to make sure that the funds raised from tonight's event can help ensure that our current students can reach the milestone, which is graduation. We would also like to thank everyone in this room who has contributed to our student success this evening. And now, as I mentioned earlier, I'd like to introduce a man who truly needs no introduction. In Washington, while they say president, a lot of times they're talking about this gentleman. <laughs> and of course, I'm talking about the man with vision, Eduardo Padron, president of Miami-Dade College. Dr. Padron. Good evening. Ah, that didn't sound good. Good evening. What a crowd here tonight. It's an impressive, impressive to see so many alumni and friends of the college gather here to honor 22 outstanding professionals who are second to none in their fields. And for me and for those of us who, who labor at Miami-Dade College, nothing gives us more pleasure than to recognize those individuals who, like me and like many of you, had a start at this college and have gone on to become great citizens who contribute to this community and who are all over the world, but mostly in, in Miami, uh, to build a city that, that we love so much. As you know, Miami-Dade College is such an important part of the economic and social uh, fabric of this community. And we're proud that in our 50 years, we have served close to two million people uh, in this community. People that in many cases would not have had a chance to achieve the American dream of a college degree, which is the key to the middle class, if it were not for this institution. So when I say that Miami-Dade College is the great equalizer in our community, when I tell you that this is the dream factory of Miami-Dade County, I think that's a, a real statement and one that we strongly believe in. As you know, our motto is opportunity changes everything, and we see it every day. As Juan mentioned, we just graduated 14,000 students who, before you know it, will become leaders in their fields and will contribute to this wonderful community. This institution has proven that access and excellence can go hand in hand. We are a model of inclusion. We take pride in giving everyone a chance, which is what America needs today. Unfortunately, too many institutions select the people they want to work with, select students just on the basis of high GPAs and high SATs. Those students are going to succeed in spite of those institutions. But giving students who have gone through difficult times in life, sometimes who lack the skills but are bright and have a tremendous human condition, giving them a hand and showing them the way, is the, world that you build, is the way that you build community. And we at Miami-Dade are proud uh, to do that. I don't think you can find a, most, a more democratic institution in this nation than Miami-Dade College. <laughs> and in spite of the fact that we're an institution with an open door, we take great pride on the fact that this institution is acknowledged as one of the best colleges and universities in the country. And this is acknowledged almost every day in the national media. So, so today, I'm just very grateful to have the opportunity to serve you in the position that I have and to be able to join with you to rejoice and at the same time raise funds to do what is most important in this community, give people that are deserving the opportunity for a college education. Uh, not too long ago, we announced an unprecedented opportunity, which is guaranteeing every single senior who graduates in Miami-Dade County with a grade of B or better, a college education for two years, which means And we call that the American Dream Scholarship. And what that means is that young people in this community no longer will have to worry about not having the money to be able to go to college. Because we all know that in America today, if you don't have a college degree, 
you're going to be in the cycle of poverty for the rest of your life. So I want to thank those of you, because so many of you here made it possible to create that fund. And there are many philanthropic institutions and so many friends of the college. And this is unprecedented. No other city has been able to do this for the young people and the young generations. So we, it's, a, it's an evening to celebrate in more ways than one. I'm so proud of everyone that we're honoring today. And they follow a great tradition of, of leadership and contribution uh, through many, many of the other inductees that have been recognized here every year. So if you would join me in a big round of applause for the honorees, that would be a good thing to do. In closing, let me say the following. These things could not happen if we were not for the generosity of a lot of people, especially corporations in town that always come uh, when we call on them.